Hello YouTube. Today I'm putting together a battery. It'll be 54 amp hour, 12.8 uh, volts. I'm using the LifePo cells from Battery Hookup. These are the 6 amp hour, 3.2 volt LifePo cells. Um, LifePo for um, lithium iron phosphate. And I don't have my spot welder in yet, so I decided to play around with another way of hooking them up. Um, I'm, I'm using some sheet metal I found and sanded down and bent. Part of it was painted black, so just ignore that. But uh, And um, what I'm going to use is magnets and sheet metal to hook this up. Now, this is going to be a 100 amp continuous... I have a BMS here and it's from China. I got it off eBay. Um, I've tested it. Uh, I've put a hundred amps through it and it didn't even seem to get warm. So I'm, I'm pretty happy, you know, with a few seconds, like maybe 10 seconds, I couldn't even feel any heat on it. So I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed so far. And I've checked, you know, over voltage, under voltage. Um, everything seems to work flawlessly. So I, uh, for $25 on eBay, Canadian, uh, can't beat that. And I can include the link if someone wants to see that, so I'll put that in the description. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of sheet metal, um, several pieces actually. I've cut several pieces, intermediate pieces for the stack and uh, top plates for the positive and another one for the negative. So what I'm going to have is 36 cells. This will be a 4S 9P. So 36 cells. Each grouping will take up half this size. It'll be 9 cells stacked on top of 9 cells and then 9 cells over here stacked on 9 cells. So it'll be this shape. Now this side is going to be positive. So I'm going to have positive on top and then the next group will have positive on top and that will connect across this bottom effective bus bar and the positive will be on the bottom here coming up to a negative and then from there the next battery will be positive to a negative so the negative will be this side the positive will be this side and so I sort of made this modular so as I test if I, if I want to take it apart I can easily take it apart um, it'll just sit there as a battery backup and I'll be I'll be doing some tests with it. Um, I like the magnets because I can easily change a cell. I can uh, take everything apart very easily. Like the, even the BMS will hook up uh, through magnets. All the all the sense wires and the balance leads will hook up. As you can see right here, they're just all connected through magnets. Individual wires you know connected to magnets so I can connect them wherever I want so I'm gonna put this together first of all I've got these cell holders or 32 650s and uh, so I just fit it inside this tray and now I've got the 32 650 there's I don't have any magnets on top, but I got magnets on the bottom here stuck to. So I can just stick them in there like that. Right? So I can just start adding these with the negative up, because this is be the negative side. As you can see, this this goes pretty quick. You just want to make sure you put everything in the right direction and make sure you have magnets. But you know, if you're spot welding, you got to make sure everything's in the right direction. And you got to make sure you don't miss a spot weld. What's the difference? Um, with this, one cool thing, these magnets are fairly strong. And if you had, uh, let's say, a situation where the battery is bouncing around and eventually let's say it breaks a spot weld well this would under that much stress this would uh, break the connection 
uh, temporarily, but the magnet always is always trying to pull everything together, so it's self-healing. Kind of a neat concept. Now, there is one weird thing. Uh, these magnets, some people think, well, they can't handle the current. Well, I've tested this at 30 amps for 10 seconds through a single magnet, and check my wires were getting hot but i checked the magnet like instantly i i opened I, I took the lead off and just instantly checked and the magnet was completely cool there was no heat um, i also did it for 12 amps at one minute no heat and what i want to do th th these can handle 18 amps each continuous each cell what i'm going to do is have about 11 amps at the most coming through this. I have a 100 amp BMS, nine times 11 is 99. So basically 11.1 whatever amps per cell. Well, I know it doesn't get hot. I know the magnet can take it. The only thing, the only problem is the gauge uh, sheet metal I had is, I measured this, it was 28 gauge. It does get hot on the top. These are the, these pieces go here the current flows straight up through the metal and out. So the thickness of the, the steel doesn't even matter. These won't get hot at all. You can use very thin stuff for this in between sections. The bottom section here acts as a bus bar. And I've checked, it doesn't get hot either. The only thing that seems to get hot is the top positive and negative just because, well, where I connected, in this case, I connected a wire to the side. So a lot of current flow from here over to here, and this part gets hot. So I'm going to address that by hooking multiple wi four wires, each 12 gauge, uh, and that'll be effectively a six gauge wire. If you, if you hook four 12 gauges in parallel, that is a six gauge wire, um, which is more than enough for 100 amps, and it'll it'll take that heat off. So this thin metal can still work. Now, ideally, I would like to use like a 22 gauge or something like that. I did the math on the, the cross section of the gauge of steel and based on conductivity of steel and copper and all that stuff, I knew 28 gauge was gonna get hot. And sure enough, real world test, I put about 98 amps through it and it got hot in about three seconds. Um, within 10 seconds, it was almost too hot to touch. I took it off, which Kind of burned my hands by the way it was actually pretty warm the battery and the magnets on top were not hot at all but eventually it would i mean that would radiate heat down to the the cells and damage them so i don't want that so i'm going to fix that but in the meantime i'm just showing how long this takes to hook hook a battery up okay so what we need now is more magnets so i'm gonna put magnets on this I'm facing all these the same direction so that the next layer, well, you'll see what I'm talking about. Basically, if the magnets are um, the wrong direction with this center connect connection piece, the next layer of magnets will also try to push to the side because they'll repel each other, even through the sheet metal. So, and you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Also, you'll notice the magnets look I don't know, you can see my fingerprints on them, things like that. Um, I put some silicon grease on. The, the reason I did that is because if you have a dielectric grease, it's it prevents, prevents corrosion. So what will happen is the, the nickel plating on the the magnet and the nickel plating on the battery is fine. You're not going to get corrosion there. But interfacing with a steel plate, it's galvanized. Um, but I also sanded this down. So basically you've got steel. And steel and nickel, I believe, will corrode over time unless you put some type of dielectric grease on there. Just a thin coating is all you need. And it should last for years. Um, kind of messy to work with though and you could use Vaseline but I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend Vaseline um, I'd recommend silicon based because some of the plastics and whatnot could be degraded by Vaseline or non-silicon based grease so um, 
Okay, so we got that. So now let's uh, hook these up. Now, before we do that, let's put another cell holder on here. Keep everything nice and tight. Okay, everything has a battery. I mean, everything has a magnet. So make sure, double check, everything's positive on this side, negative on that side. There's no magnet stuck under here. You can see the layer of grease on that. Boom, snaps together. Same thing. This one will be like this, actually, it'll be like this. Okay, so no magnets, got nine magnets, all negative, check, boom. Now, these tabs bend up and down to keep everything lined up. And they notice it doesn't cross over here because they were purposely cut too short to do that. All right? So now, I'll take some more of these magnets. flipped over Feels like it's flipped over to me. Alright. Another one of these guys, make sure there's magnets on everything. Everything's good. Now put the positive here. Positive, positive, positive. So putting the negatives pointing up on this side. Now we just got to put this connector back again. This is a positive lead. Boom. And negative. Whatever I did with it. Ah. My workbench is too messy. Make sure there's no magnets. Boom. Now. Thirteen point three eight. Fully charged battery. Just to show you this. Now this is only um, two twelve. This is uh effectively a nine gauge coming off here so not great for this so 13 point whatever now that's showing 800 cranking amps on the battery test I'll do that one more time now that's that's with a big voltage drop coming off these wires 
if I double up these wires, uh, then I'm probably going to get at least a thousand cranking amps. But as you can see right now, it's going to the 800, just over the 800 mark. And jumps right back up to the voltage. Everybody's happy. This thing works fantastically. Now, the next stage would be just hooking this up. I know that black goes to the negative. Like you could take, basically I just soldered these. And wherever you want to connect it, like I would go up under on the inside of each thing. Because if you wrap this battery, you don't want wires coming out. But And just go through and connect everything. Um, and I'll take the four wires here and go to this bus bar on the BMS. And then coming off here will be another four wires that go to my inverter and... Um, some battery post you know just for accessing 12 volts and a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug this will be in a battery pack anyway so uh, as you can see that goes together pretty quickly now you could tape everything you could whatever you want to do um, to protect it I, this is going in a box and I may put foam or something around it to keep it from moving other than that it's gonna stay like it is and the BMS will be probably attached to this plate through some really rigid copper wire and with this fiberglass underneath it'll be attached to it so it'll be floating above it just like that and of course it can't short because of the fiberglass and then coming off this will be the the rest of it so <clears throat> and that way when i take this negative plate off the whole bms comes with it and I can just I can and I can unplug it. I can pull the wires out, however I want to do it. And I can disassemble the pack within a, about a minute, and then start putting it all back together again with a new cell or maybe improved cells or maybe uh, maybe I got to take one cell out of each one because one cell went bad. You know, whatever. Uh, this gives you the well the flexibility to easily do things like that. Anyway, that's. Uh, that's all I got today. I just thought people might be interested in a, sort of a quick way to put a battery together. Um, you can use different size plates for different configurations. Like I could have a, a 4x4 and a 5x5 or I could have a long, long strips. You know, so instead of 9 it could be uh, maybe 12 or 18. Things like that and you just have a longer battery. You know, there's different ways or you could just have, you know, um, like six by six and stack the layers up so it's just a big battery uh whatever whatever you want and the sheet metal is cheap the magnets are cheap they can handle the current everybody's happy the only problem i have with it is you have to use silicon grease to make sure it doesn't corrode um so it kind of gets messy a little bit um but a thin layer it's all you need anyway that's it um hope you enjoy that thanks a lot